From the outside, you'd never guess the drama unfolding inside. Please know that we are uh, handling this uh, situation as a top priority. Nearly 4,000 passengers, but the corridors empty and the foyers deserted. The only sign of activity, health officials covered head to toe and cleaners disinfecting every corner. 20 passengers have now been infected, at least some already escorted off and taken to hospital. The cruise was supposed to end Tuesday, but instead, now another two weeks at sea. Passengers are confined to their cabins. Some have balconies, others don't even have windows. I'm calling it cabin arrest. It's a three meter by five meter room and uh, we can't leave. Paul Mirko is from Metro Vancouver and diabetic. We got a form left at our door and we're supposed to fill that out and um, uh, hopefully Ministry of Health will provide medications before everything runs out. I brought extra with me so I'm, I'm good for four or five days but uh, that's, that is a concern. Food is delivered to each room. Meals though a concern for people with dietary needs like David Abel who's also diabetic. If I do not receive food soon I will be in a diabetic coma. Staff eventually provided him what he needed, but passengers say communication has been slow. Many questions remain, like how the cruise line plans to contain any potential new cases. I can't see how they're going to be able to monitor this any other way than taking serious samples. Just temperature checks, to me, is going to be inadequate. Concerns the Canadian government is trying to address, too. Again, we want to reassure the families both on the, on the cruise ship that we are uh, alert and engaged in their issue uh, and, uh, and trying to work with families at home to reassure them as well. For those trapped on board, the uncertainty grows day by day. At the end of the 14 days, can I go home? For now, they have nothing but time to wonder and worry. Tanya Fletcher, CBC News, Vancouver.